In this video, we're going to be talking about n behavior of polynomial functions. And before we get into that, I want to review what each quadrant is for a Cartesian plane. So this quadrant here is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. And the reason why I want to review that is because we're going to be using these quadrants to describe the n behavior. So for example, if we have the function x squared, which is just a parabola, which looks like this. If we were to describe the n behaviors of this parabola, what we would do is we would read always from left to right. So whenever you're describing n behavior, you want to remember you read from left to right. And reading from left to right, this uh, polynomial x squared starts in quadrant 2 and it ends in quadrant 1. For example, if we had negative x squared, it would look like this and it would start in quadrant 3 and it would end in quadrant 4. Or if we had x cubed, it would look something like this. Reading from left to right, it would start in quadrant 3 and then it would end in quadrant 1. Now, another way to describe quadrant 2 to quadrant 1, so if it starts in quadrant 2, what that means is as x goes to negative infinity, so you write as x goes to negative infinity, the y values are going to positive infinity. And quadrant 1, as x goes to positive infinity, then y is going to positive infinity as well. Now, what if we took the other example? So let's say we had f of x is equal to negative x squared. So this is negative x squared. So we would have here quadrant 3. So it would start in quadrant 3 and then end in quadrant 4. And another way to write the n behavior from quadrant 3 to quadrant 4. So qu starting in quadrant 3, that means that as x goes to negative infinity, the y values are also going to negative infinity. And then ending in quadrant 4, as x is going to positive infinity, y is going to negative infinity. So a lot of times you're going to have to be describing n behaviors in this format. You're not just going to be able to say quadrant 3 to quadrant 4 or quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. You're going to have to describe it in this notation here. So this n behavior, just so you don't get confused, was for x squared and then this n behavior in blue was for negative x squared. But x squared and negative x squared are sort of easy to work with. Like what if we had a big polynomial like 5x to the power of 5 plus 3x to the power of 4 and so on and so on. What would be the n behavior of that? Or can we make a general rule for all polynomial functions where we'll be able to know what the n behavior is when we're reading from left to right? So the n behavior of a polynomial function depends on two things always. The degree and the sign of the leading coefficient. So for example, the first case would be if the degree is even and the sign of the leading coefficient is positive. And we already did that example here, x squared. The degree 2 is even and the leading coefficient in front of it 1 is positive. So it's just this parabola and the end behavior was from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. So on the left it starts at quadrant 2 and then it ends on the right at quadrant 1. And we can rewrite these n behaviors in different notations. So for quadrant 2, 
meaning this part here, as x goes to negative infinity, y is going to positive infinity, quadrant one. As x goes to positive infinity, y is also going to positive infinity. So an example of a polynomial function a little bit more complex than x squared that has an even degree and a positive leading coefficient. So let's make one right now. Uh, something like, let's say 3x4 plus x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3. Right, so the leading coefficient, three, is positive and the degree is even. So we know that this polynomial function would have this end behavior. It would start in quadrant two, when we're reading from the left to right, start in quadrant two, end in quadrant one. Next case, degree is even, sign of the leading coefficient is negative, then the end behavior, as we mentioned with negative x squared, leading coefficient is negative, negative one, and the degree is even two. End behavior would be from quadrant three to quadrant four. And we can rewrite that uh, quadrant three to quadrant four end behavior as x goes to negative infinity for quadrant three. As x is going to negative infinity, y is going to negative infinity as well. And then for quadrant four, as x is going to positive infinity, y is going to negative infinity. So a more complex example of this would be something like negative five x squared plus three x minus four. All right, so the leading coefficient is negative five in front of the variable with the highest degree. So negative five, negative leading coefficient, and the degree is two, which is even. So we know that this uh, polynomial function, when we read from left to right, it would start in quadrant three and end in quadrant four. Moving on to the next case, if we have an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient, the end behavior would be from quadrant three to quadrant one. And I rewrote the quadrant three end behavior in this notation, the same as I did up here. And then the quadrant one, uh, I wrote in this notation, same as we did up here, as x goes to positive infinity, y is also going to positive infinity. And a simple example for this one is just, we mentioned it before, is x cubed. Right, the leading coefficient is one, so it's positive, and it has a odd degree of three. And the way that this looks like is, it looks something like this. So when we read from left to right, it's starting in quadrant three. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity, and it's ending to the furthest right in quadrant one. So as x goes to positive infinity, y is going to positive infinity. And a more complex example that we can put for this would be something like, let's think here, uh, something like, let's say 5x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. Right, the leading coefficient 5 is positive, the degree is odd of 3. So we know that this polynomial, however we graphed it, it would have n behaviors from quadrant 3 to quadrant one. And the final case, if the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is negative, then we'll have end behavior from quadrant two to quadrant four. And I rewrote those end behaviors in the blue notation. So a simple example of that would be negative x cubed. So negative x cubed, if you graph that, it's going to look something like this. So if you read from left to right, it's starting in quadrant two and it's ending in quadrant four. Or if we rewrite in the other notation as x goes to negative infinity, y is going to positive infinity for where it begins. And then as x goes to positive infinity, y is going to negative infinity. And a more complex example of this would be something like negative three x to the five plus x three plus three x squared minus two. All right, just some random polynomial function. The degree is odd, a degree of five, and the leading coefficient is negative, negative three. 
So if you took this, for example, let's say you went to Desmos and you inputted this, if you looked at the graph, it would have end behavior from quadrant two to quadrant four. And that's it, those are all the cases. So you can use these cases depending on the type of question that you get. So for example, let's say that I ask you, what would be the end behavior of this function? Just some random function that we don't know how to graph, but we can tell that the leading coefficient is negative and the degree of three is odd. So an odd degree, a negative leading coefficient, we know that the end behavior is gonna be from quadrant two to quadrant four. So this function is gonna look something at the ends like this. It's gonna start in quadrant two when we read from left to right and end in quadrant four. We don't know what's happening in the middle, but we do know what's happening at the ends at this point in time. Or another thing that you can get is you can get a graph. So for example, let's say that you have a polynomial function and you're given a graph that looks like this, some crazy polynomial function that we don't know how to get the equation of, but we can tell what the degree is and what the leading coefficient will be because it has n behavior from quadrant three to quadrant four. Quadrant three to quadrant four, so we know the degree of this polynomial function is going to be even and we know the leading coefficient is going to be negative. So in conclusion, use this table of cases however you can depending on the types of questions that you are given.